All right, so another impressive performance. That's three in a row. Kind of talk us through uh, through your night. Well, um, the difference between this fight and, and my, my previous two ones was a lot to do with my mental uh, attitude towards it. Uh, I, I used more uh, kind of anger and fury to, to fuel myself up for the last two ones uh, because I, I felt like in my early fights, I was way too relaxed because in my natural state, I'm, I'm very like, calm and collected person. So I couldn't really light the fire uh, that I needed to perform. And uh, I kind of find that, found that through mental training in my last two fights uh, that got me the win. But I felt also like it took a lot of energy out of me during the whole week having that mindset. So I think now I've learned to, to, uh, to perform uh, in the same uh, uh, high level, but, but without the, the emotions attached to it, uh, which saves me a lot of energy. Because tonight I felt so relaxed. I was just in the now. I could read everything he did and I could like breathe and relax in between every position and I felt so like strong and powerful whenever I did something so like all the pieces came together so you mentioned your preparations throughout the week obviously it's a unique climate with with COVID yeah. tell us uh, how your week went uh well it was not that exciting <laughs> a lot of time in the room but like um I try to read and, and get my mind on, on other things. Uh, and uh, I was looking at a lot of fight, fight videos, uh, obviously, to get myself in that uh, right mindset. And I uh, came here and trained at the arena whenever uh, possible. Um, so it was honestly a good time for reflection and uh, game planning. Uh, I always try to make the best out of every situation. I, I don't attach any feelings to it good or bad like it is what it is jay anderson thanks very much and uh oliver congratulations on the win um i know you said post fight mma is kind of a personal journey for you and you don't pay too close attention to the vision but do you think realistically you are a, a fair bit closer to a title shot now than you than you have been oh absolutely uh i mean three first round finishes um by tk one submission that i mean that speaks for itself um, so if, I don't know if there's a ranking, <laughs> uh, I don't follow it really, but, uh, I mean, I always want to, uh, climb the ladder, so to speak, uh, and get harder and harder challenges because that's the way I I'm looking at it. Another one for me, um, you know, you had fans back in the building tonight. It's a historic night, just overall the atmosphere and everything tonight. How was this experience for you? At first I thought it would be very weird having not that much much audience i thought the whole country was going to go in lockdown um but i already had that experience almost uh, in my bellator debut uh, because i was the swing bout so it got moved until after the main event which meant there was like no audience left it was after midnight i had to fight so i was kind of uh expecting that to be the case uh, tonight but uh hearing the the audience cheer when i walked in that was amazing uh, and i'm glad they got to view the this first historic event of mma here um so just a very cool feeling and this arena is amazing donna uh talk to me about i know you mentioned during the week first off congratulations on the victory but you mentioned during the week you've been watching a lot of uh, cobra kai in your room while you were quarantining did that inspire the, uh, the, the, the walkout song choice? Yes, yes, it did. Uh, I, uh, so, so I have this karate background. Uh, I'm born and raised in a family. Uh, my both parents did karate and we run a karate dojo. My, my brother has a very big YouTube community. Uh, they call themselves karate nerds. Uh, and it's like hundreds of thousands. Uh, so I, I always try to like represent that old school traditional side uh, because it's uh, in my roots. Uh, so it's it's also a fun gimmick. Uh, and I, I've been watching the Netflix series Cobra Kai all the weekend. I just watched the last episode yesterday before the fight now. So it was perfect timing. And I just felt, I'm, man, I have to walk out to this song. So it was fun. Maybe uh, now you're 10 and two, you're three. Uh, 3-0 in the promotion with Bellator. Maybe it's time to change that nickname maybe to something karate-related from the future. I think the future is kind of a dead nickname at this point, right? 
Yes, I've, I've been saying that for years. Uh, I wasn't <laughs> the one who, who chose that nickname. I got it like six years ago, and I feel more like the present than the future. Uh, and I never put my, my nickname when I like uh, register for these events or anything, but it still shows up there, the future. So <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> just call me Oliver and Kent, that's fine for me. Or the karate kid, or whatever. Last one for me. Uh, did you kind of relish the role of being the villain tonight, being the heel? Because obviously you were against the guy, the hometown guy, the first hometown guy to, to, to grace that arena. Uh, and, and of course, the fans were, they, they weren't so much against you, but they were very much on his side. Absolutely. Yeah, and uh, my thing is, uh, I'm always cheering for the good guys, you know. I want to be a good role model and ambassador for the sport. So uh, now uh, it, was, it was fun, like, because I'm coming in an enemy territory, like from their point of view, um, fighting their home guy. So I thought the whole thing with Cobra Kai was, was pretty fun as well, because he's like a bad guy in the Karate Kid series. Uh, so I guess it all came together perfectly at the end. Santiago. Oliver, congratulations on a beautiful performance. That's 3-0 now with Bellator, three finishes within the first round. Are you maybe looking for a main event fight next? I mean, you are clearly a finisher. Your last three opponents didn't even last one round with you in the cage. And you have a lot of these welterweight fights in the main event. Page, Michael Page later on. Uh, Paul Daly was supposed to fight Derek Anderson. Do you think something like that is, uh, is going to fit you? Absolutely. So what I'm hoping for is that Bellator lands in Sweden next and I get to main event that. Um, because it's been rumored for some time now. Um, and I think if it hadn't been for the COVID situation, maybe they would already have uh, gone there. Uh, and in my hometown, Stockholm, there's been a lot of big global uh, MMA events. So there's uh, plenty of good venues and the fans are familiar with the sport. Uh, so I, I, for me, that would be the optimal next step. And the last thing for me, I couldn't really see it that clearly, but was your brother Jesse in your corner? I mean, shout out to the karate nerd. His YouTube page is so entertaining with all the karate videos. And you and him make a really good team, man. Thank you, sir. Uh, yes, he, he is always with me and making a video log about the fight week and such. And after the, uh, the event, we go home and we break down the fight for, for all the viewers. Uh, and uh, I kind of let him know my game plan and uh, what I thought, what went through my head in the fight. Uh, so he's always with me. And the other guy was Tim, who is one of my uh, longtime training partners. Uh, he was also the coach for this fight. Andrew? Congratulations on the win, Oliver. Uh, just expanding upon that whole, uh, that whole thing you said about the martial arts being a personal journey for you. And also, it sounded like, as well, you want to put on a performance for the audience. I think you said that as well. Just yes. tell us, I'm curious to know what that philosophy, when you developed that philosophy, is that something recent or have you always had that philosophy of kind of you before competition, performance before competition? Just talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so there's two sides of that coin. Uh, first and foremost, I've never been a competitive person. Uh, so people find that hard to believe uh, because I'm in a very competitive sport, uh, but Honestly, like even since I was a kid, uh, I never wanted to to compete against anyone but myself. Uh, I always want to improve whatever I'm doing, but uh, I don't like competition because it makes conflict somehow. So say I was uh, in, in a gang of my friends and we we're playing video games. If I started to win too much, I would let the other guy win so we didn't create a bad environment. And that's always been my attitude. So I, I prefer to spread love than win against someone. Uh, and the other side of that coin is um, me growing up in a traditional karate dojo, which is not only about the physical training, but also the correct character development. So it's a lot about teaching respect, discipline, humility, and uh, bringing your karate outside the dojo to make the world a better place. And, and like growing as a per person and not only as an athlete. And I've been in the dojo since I was like four years old. So, so it's, deeply ingrained in, in my upbringing and uh, something I think is a great uh, thing to spread um, through the world and, and through my platform, which is MMA. We have time for one more question. Lenny March. How's it going, Oliver? And congratulations on that uh, impressive performance. Uh, yeah, again, three fights, three first round finishes, and it, it came out really quick. You know, it, it looked, seemed like the fans kind of fueled him and he came out really fast. Did you kind of expect him to start fast today? 
Um, <clears throat> I was expecting everything. So last night we came here to the arena to do some training. And this is something I always do. I come to, to watch the whole uh, uh, event unfold in front of my eyes. So I'm visually prepared for what's gonna happen. And uh, we kind of simulate the fight and my, my training partner put, puts his gear on and runs towards me with different uh, kind of uh, attacks or backs away or shoots him for a double leg or, you know, making me expect anything that can happen because I don't know what's going on in my opponent's head. So I can't expect anything because then I might fall into a trap. So uh, I was just making sure I was first out in the middle of the cage and then whatever happens, happens.